Hi guys, we're going to do Act 3, Scene 5. Hope you can hear the birds singing out my window. Um, so, there are a lot of lines in this scene that you've probably heard before, um, just like with the balcony scene at the beginning of Act 2. Um, this scene traditionally also would have been performed on Juliet's balcony, so it would have been um, from above. Most modern productions will actually play the opening of the scene more in Juliet's bedroom, um, but all of the scenes in a traditional Shakespearean Globe production would have happened on the street or on Juliet's balcony. That's pretty much, um, then they also use Friar Lawrence's cell. But, like, the number of sets, settings, would have been very slim. Um, anytime you have a stage production, you want to put as many things on one set as you can. That way you have that many fewer sets to build or to represent from backdrops or something like that. So, um, this would have taken place traditionally on Juliet's balcony, and it's morning. So um, Romeo and Juliet have spent the, spent the night together, but um, Romeo has to leave because he has to be gone from Verona before he gets caught by the watchman. Um, because if he's caught in Verona, then he'll be put to death. So Juliet says at the beginning of the scene, Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. And the reason it matters is if it was the nightingale that woke them up because they were woken by bird song, a bird singing. Um, if it was a nightingale, nightingales sing at night. So if it was a nightingale, then it's still nighttime. But Romeo says, it was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night candles, night's candles are burnt out, and jock and day stands tiptoe on the misty mountaintops. I must be gone and live or stay and die. So Romeo says, it was not a nightingale, it was a lark. It's morning, you can see um, light coming on the sky, like it's almost dawn. Um, and then Juliet says, it's not daylight, it is some meteor that the sun exhales to light thee on the, on the way to Mantua. Therefore stay yet, thou needest not to be gone. So the reason it matters, whether it's night or day still, is if it's day, then he has to be gone. If it's night, then he can stay longer. Um, and then Romeo says, let me be taken, let me be put to death. I am content, so thou wilt have it so. I'll say yon gray is not the morning's eye, tis but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow, which is a reference to the moon. Um, okay, so if Juliet wants him to stay, he's willing to stay. But once he says um, that the word death, then I think it becomes a lot more immediate to her. And so on page two, she says, um, hi hence, be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps. Some say the larks make sweet division. Tis not, tis, this doth not so, for she divideth us. Um, okay, oh now be gone, more light and light it grows. So Juliet's rushing Romeo like you have to leave because she doesn't want him to be put to death for remaining in Verona. And then, um, here comes the nurse. So the nurse walks in. Um, and the nurse is warning her, Juliet, that her mom is on the way upstairs to talk to her. Um, so then Romeo says, farewell, farewell, one kiss, and I'll descend. So on page two. And then page three, um, Art thou gone so, love, Lord, I, husband, friend, must hear for thee, from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. Oh, by this count I shall be much in years, ere I again behold my Romeo. Um, and then Juliet. Juliet here um, kind of does a role reversal with Romeo. Romeo is usually the more impulsive one, and Juliet's usually more slow and thoughtful and um, weighs her decisions carefully. Um, 
But Juliet says, like, she's concerned. She's the one who's worried. And she says, Oh God, I have an ill divining soul. Methinks I see thee now thou art so low as dead one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails or thou lookest pale. So Julia is looking down on him and she has this like premonition or this vision that she's looking at his dead body. So she she feels as if she's looking down into his coffin um, because he looks pale like sick or dead and her position being above him looking down she has this premonition of seeing him in a tomb seeing seeing him in his grave um and then Romeo says like this is a previous line but he says I doubt it not and all these I doubt it not which is shall we meet again he doubts it not and all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come so Romeo is trying to reassure her like we will be together again um and this will just be like a good story we tell um because we're going to make it through it and then Romeo leaves and um so then Lady Capulet comes in um Lady Capulet always kind of cautious and uncomfortable with her daughter like not a casual relationship always formal um okay and Juliet says madam I am not well Romeo's left Juliet's not even sure she's ever going to see him again and she is very upset um Lady Capulet thinks that Juliet is upset over the death of Tybalt um and Lady Capulet says basically like you know, this is a little little too much for the death of a cousin. Um, you're not going to bring him back by crying. I'm on page four. Um, and Lady Capulet says, oh, I know why you're so upset. It's not because of the death of Tybalt. It's because the villain lives who slaughtered him, which is Romeo. So you're just all this upset because Romeo is still alive. Um... And then on page five, I'm going to ask you to pull out some of these lines that have um, double meanings because Juliet very carefully crafts what she says to her mother and her father. Um, it means one thing to her parents and it means another to her audience because of um, uh, dramatic irony. Like, we know that Juliet's been married to Romeo. Her parents don't know. So these um, these lines have double meanings, one for us and one for the parents. Um, okay, and then Lady Capulet says, don't worry, we're going to take care of that villain, Romeo. Um, and then Lady Capulet says, you're so lucky because your, your wonderful father has worked out a sudden day of joy um, and you, County Paris, shall come on Thursday morning and shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. So you're going to marry Paris on Thursday. Um, and then one of my, one of, I think, Juliet's best lines is, <coughs> excuse me, I will not marry yet, and when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate rather than Paris. So Juliet says she would rather marry Romeo in Paris and we know of course that she already has and then Capulet comes in and says um, to Lady Capulet so what does she say have you de delivered to her decree have you told her what what's gonna happen um, and then Lady Capulet says yes but she will none she gives you thanks I would the fool were married to her grave and I hate these lines Lady Capulet says like yeah, she said no, and I wish she were dead. Um, Capulet says, oh, I can't believe it. Like, isn't she grateful that we have arranged such, such a great catch for her to marry? And Juliet says, trying to maintain this, like, respect for her parents, because she is respectful of them. Um, she says, not proud you have, but thankful that you had have proud can I be never be of what I hate but thankful even for hate that is meant in love so she is she hates the news but she doesn't hate the sentiment that it was delivered in she knows that her parents have good intentions um 
And then Capulet says, get, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hit, hurdle thither. Out you green sickness, carrion, out you baggage, you tallow face. So she, he says, you will go to church and you will marry him. Um, Ju Lady Capulet, like, notices that he's losing his temper. Um, and Juliet begs her father on her knees, just let me speak. Um, and then Capulet says on page 8, my fingers itch, so he wishes he could strike her. He's that angry. Um, and then my least favorite line of the play just so much hate such an awful thing that um capulet says to his daughter he says wife we scarce thought us blessed that god hath had lent us but this only child but now i see this one is one too much and that we have a curse in having her so he says that he's sorry juliet had ever been born they thought they were so lucky to have just one child but it turns out that she was a curse and not a blessing um Okay, and then Capulet and the nurse are angry at each other because the nurse is trying to get everyone to just calm down, sticking up for Juliet. Um, okay. And we have some motivation of um, Juliet's father revealed at the end of page 8. Um, he says... Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise, and you be mine, I'll give you to my friend, and you be not, hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll never acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good, trust to it, bethink you, I'll not be forsworn, and forsworn is the key word here, he has made a promise to Paris, and he has said, Juliet will listen to me. And Juliet will marry you because I'm going to tell her to. And Juliet has refused. And so Capulet has said that he will put Juliet out on the streets. And she can beg and starve for all he cares because he is not going to break his promise and go back on his word to Paris. Um, and Juliet begs her mother for mercy and Lady Capulet says, talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I've done with thee, so I'm done. I'm not going to listen to any more. And Juliet um, asks the nurse for comfort, because the nurse is her comfort, comfort -er, comforter. Um, Juliet asks the nurse, what should I do? I can't marry Paris. I'm married to Romeo. I, I can't marry someone else. I've already given my vow to Romeo. And the nurse on page 10 um, says, Romeo is gone, and he's not coming back. And I, Paris is a good guy, and I think you should marry him. And that's the nurse's advice to Juliet. Um, okay, and then Juliet says, Speakest thou from thy heart? And the nurse says, And from my soul too, else be shrew them birth, both. Curse both my heart and my soul and Juliet says amen which is like yeah curse your heart and soul for saying that um and then Juliet tells the nurse go tell my mom I've changed my mind I'll marry him um and I'm leaving I'm gonna go to Friar Lawrence and I'm gonna ask for permission I'm gonna go to confession and ask Friar Lawrence not not permission forgiveness um, she's going to go to confession for displeasing her father. And um, the nurse said, yes, this is good. This is a good thing you're doing. And then um, on page 11 at the end of the scene, Juliet says that she can no longer trust the nurse. She's broken her promise to her like she can't be trusted anymore. So Juliet doesn't feel like she has anybody that she can rely on because Romeo is gone. And so she is going to go to Friar Lawrence and ask him what she should do. And she says at the end of the scene, um, I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, 
myself have power to die. So she's going to go ask the friar for help, and if he can't help her and doesn't have good advice to give her, she is prepared to take her own life and commit suicide rather than marry Paris after having already married Romeo. So this concludes this the act, and I'll see you next time.